You're watching Statistics Made Simple and I am Sabita Walsing. The last topic under testing of hypothesis chapter are the small sample tests. Here, the sample size n will be less than 30. I am explaining the procedure for test for single mean. Consider a normal population with mean mu and variance sigma square. Note that the population variance sigma square is unknown. This is an important point to keep in mind. Now suppose a random sample of size n is drawn from this population. Then we note that the sample mean is given by x bar equal to summation x divided by small n. And the sample variance is given by s square equal to summation x minus x bar whole square divided by n. You will see that the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are exactly the same as what I had explained under large sample tests for tests for single mean. Here the null hypothesis is of the form H0, the population mean is mu0, that is mu equal to mu0 versus any one of the following alternatives. The first one H1 mu is not equal to mu0, second H1 mu is greater than mu0 and third H1 mu is less than mu0. Under H0 the test statistic is T equal to x bar minus mu naught divided by s by root n minus 1 which follows t n minus 1. Note that it is small s which stands for the sample standard deviation and we know that t is the student's t variate which is explained under theoretical distributions. Now the conclusions are if we are testing a null hypothesis against a two-tail alternative. You have to check if modulus of t is greater than t alpha by 2 at alpha level of significance for n minus 1 degrees of freedom. If this condition is satisfied, we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. Note that t alpha by 2 value can be found from the statistical tables under t test for a two tailed test. Similarly, if we are testing a null hypothesis against an alternative which is right tail, then you have to check if t value is greater than t alpha at alpha level of significance for n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Then we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. Again, t value can be computed from the statistical table under the t test, you have to look for t alpha value under the right tailed test or the upper tailed test. Then similarly, if we are testing a null hypothesis against an alternative which is left tail, you have to check if t is less than minus t alpha at alpha level of significance for n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Then we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. Minus T alpha value can be found from the statistical table or T test under lower tail value. Let me now explain how to identify that the given problem is based on tests for single mean for small samples. First, the given problem will be based on only one sample of size n which is less than 30 drawn from a population. Second, the population variance sigma square and the population standard deviation sigma will never be given as they are unknown. Words like mean, average, variance, standard deviation will be used. We should be able to obtain four values from the problem that is n mu naught x bar and either s square or s. 
Sometimes if these four values are not given in the problem, n nu naught will be given and x bar and s can be obtained from the given data through calculations. Thank you all for watching and look out for my next video where I'll find solutions to problems based on the t-test for single mean.